Um, okay, let us talk. I'm sorry, we're running late again. Let us talk about the pseudocode for the labs. So we're going to be given a line of text as input and output the number of characters excluding spaces, periods, or commas. Well, G, we just did a continue that didn't do and. So you might be able to use that to, to your advantage on this one. So basically, I have, first of all, the question is, is it a finite or an infinite loop? This is a finite. So if it's finite, I'm using four. So I've got a user input, and I've got this care count at zero. Now remember, pseudocode is language agnostic. So when I say set care count equal outside of the for loop, it's because it's pseudocode. It's not because it's exactly what I have to do in my code. In this case, I don't, in a Python sense, that care underscore count could just be in the for loop. That could be the variable in the for loop. But because it's pseudocode, it is language agnostic, so you have to spell out every step. You can use the shortcuts Python gives you in the lab. So, so I have for each character in user text. Then what do I want to do? Well, I can say if character is not equal to a space or period or a comma, then add it to the care count. And then just go back up to the top of the loop. And then you're going to output care count. Oh, I neglected that. Let me do this really quick. Um, I'm going to change this a bit because I don't want the range here. I want to show you how to use it with my list. So here, this is where I just use item. Because I can also go through a list of things. It doesn't have to be numbers. It can simply be the actual element in the list. So in this case, let's just run this, debug this real quick. I go through this, and I now have for item in my list. So instead of using the index number, I'm using the actual value in the list. So item becomes 1. Item is not, um, is not equal to and, so I'm going to print it. So now item is the word and. So now I'm not going to print it. So item is the word is two, so I'm going to print it. Item is and, so I'm not going to print it. So just be, you don't have to, all I'm trying to say is you do not have to use range with four. You can use any finite list. Like we use the dictionary, you can use the finite list. So now let's go back. Sorry for jumping. Okay, so that is 4.14. And because it's finite, you use a for loop. So here, um, I'm using while just to show it to you, but you could use a for loop here too. Um, and this is just an example of how to use a while loop in pseudocode because you might have to do that at some point in time. Okay, so we're going to take the imp, um, sorry. Many user-created passwords are simple and easy to guess. Write a program that takes a simple password and makes it stronger by replacing something. So an I is going to be replaced by an exclamation point, an A is going to be replaced by the at sign, an a, a lowercase m with an uppercase m, an uppercase b with an 8, and a 0 becomes a dot. So kind of like we did before, what we're going to do is we're going to test each of those values. So basically, I'm going to have a password. I'm going to have a use. Some, somebody's going to input a word, and I'm going to create a new password from that. And in this case, I've got counter equals zero because I'm using a while loop. But if I used a for loop, I could simply go through the for loop and the list that is, in fact, a string, a string of the list. You could just say, you know, character in whatever, you know, word. 
So what you want to do is you want to test. You want to test for each of these individual characters. You want to test for I, A, M, B, and O. And if one is those characters, then you know you have to do a replacement. So you're going to have at, you're going to be creating the password character by character by character by adding the characters together. So you're just going to say password equal password plus whatever. And if it was an I, you're going to say password is password plus exclamation point, so on. Then if nothing happens, the else will be password equal password plus whatever character you're on. And that is how you will do the replacement. You will just go through each and every character. And then at the end, you have to add QS, Q star S. So you're going to add Q star S and, buy, and print it out. So this is just an example of while in a pseudocode you could as easily use a for loop here. And you could just remember that a string is a list and you can walk through using in. And the printing out of the password, the Q star S and the printing out of the password are in the global scope, those last two lines. They are not in the loop. Okay, so this one is a little longer, but this program will output a right triangle based on user specified height, uh, triangle height and the symbol. So you're going to give it a character and you're going to give it how many rows. And it's a triangle, so you're not going to start, you're not going to put, print out just those numbers. You're going to start at one, and then you're going to increment until you get there. So this is a multidimensional loop. And again, I'm using while as an example, but you could easily use for. And what I've got is I've got two loops. I've got an outer loop and an inner loop. The outer loop counts the height. The inner loop counts the width. So if I have an outer loop, I'm going to say counter is less than height because, you know, maybe my height is four. And I'm going to say inner counter equals zero. And then I'm going to check the inner counter is less than or equal to the counter that we have for the outer loop. I'm going to output the character that they gave me. Make sure to end with a space and not a new line here. And then I'm going to set inner counter equal inner counter plus one. And then I'm going to go back up to the top of the inner loop. And if my inner counter is still less than or equal to the outer counter, then I keep going. If not, then I stop and I go to the outer loop. The outer loop at that point increments. It goes up by one. Um, oh, and before I go up to the top of the outer loop, I have to I have to print out a space or a new line. Sorry. So what I have to do is I have to do print, just a standard print statement like I did in the other example. You go up to the top of the loop, the counter changes, you change, you set the inner counter to zero, or you use a for loop. And then I start the inner loop again. So you have two loops. The outer loop counts the rows. The inner loop counts the columns. And if you do it like this, the inner one will increase for every row you have. So you're eventually going to get a four by four. Four down and four on the bottom. Um, and I think that's it. Nope, nope, one more. Sorry about that. So... This is just a Mad Libs. And basically what you're doing, somebody's going to provide words um, and you're going to complete a short story. They give you the, the um, tokens. And basically what you're just going to do is you're going to replace the tokens and while your tokens is not equal to quit. So you're going to have a word and you're going to have some tokens. And I'm sorry, you're going to have a word and then you're going to input tokens, but they're going to be a list, so you're going to split them. This is like what we did with my list. And then you're going to go through the tokens, and as long as the token is not quit, 
you're going to output eating blank tokens of zero, one, tokens of zero a day keeps the doctor away. And then you're going to ask for input and tokens again. So this is an example where you need to use the while. It is not a finite set and the user has to do input inside the loop. So user input inside the loop is going to change the outcome of the loop. So you have to use a while for 4.17 or it won't work. So sorry I kept you guys over. Does anybody have any questions at all? Where am I? Right here. Going once, going twice. Um, I know that's your question, but like the concept of, I guess, nested loops is still a little fuzzy for me. So I just think it's just going to take time to actually like dissect it all because it's a, like I got the gist of most of what you were saying, but some of it was still a little fuzzy. Okay, Jordan. Okay, Jordan. What was I'm sorry, you broke up. What'd you say? I'm sorry. What was fuzzy? Um, so if you go back to I believe four, two slides ago, three slides ago. This one. Yeah, that one. Okay. Um. So like I I understand like what's happening, but it's still. I guess I kind of just get confused about like global scope and local local scope when it comes to like, you know, these loops. I just forget like what's supposed to be counting and when and things of that nature. Okay. Well let's would it help you to go through a program that's a little similar to this that maybe we change one of them and do an if inside of it so you can Yeah, see? for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So um that's there. So do I have a better one? Four with range. Index out of bounds. Oh, I forgot to show you this one. But I'll show you that in a minute. Nested for, nested while, nested for. Is the nested loops, oops, don't look at that one. Um, I don't even have that one. So is this one kind of good or do you want to go to one with like a more for loop? Um, this one's good. Okay. Because I can go, I can go write one real quick. If you no, this, one, this one's good. Okay. So let's go back and run this. Four ten. Is that it? Four ten one. Okay. So let's talk about scope for a minute. Cause he I'm sorry, I'm trying to make this a little bigger, but it doesn't seem to want to play well in the sandbox. There we go. So we know that this is global scope. Right. We know that 16 is a global scope. Correct. Now, everything, line 17 through 20, is the local scope of the while loop. Right. However, line 19 is a local scope for the if. So okay. that you have to make sure that you have the right number of local scopes for the right um, the right type of branch. So if I did that, I've got a syntax error. I tried to run it. I get my nasty syntax error, indentation error expected, and indentation block. So PyCharm has told us that this is wrong. It's not indented. Now, I could make two choices. I could not indent it at all. I could take it all the way back, or I could take it forward. So I just took it all the way back, and if I try and run it, 
I have another indentation error because this is not in the global scope. This can't be in the global scope. It's the line right underneath the if statement and the only place I can put it is under the if. Now, let's look at what would eventually be a logic error. Right now I have user score and user score, if you look at the justification for it, user score is in the local scope of the while loop, not of the if, because if user score was in the local scope of the if statement, it would have to be justified with break. It would have to be like this, and it wouldn't work right. And we can look at that in just a second. But that, because I moved user score to the right, one tab stop, I have now moved it into the local scope of the if statement. So let's do this. Let's run this. So I am going to actually debug it. And so the first thing I do is I'm going to put in A. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another A. Now, it says here if Simon pattern is not equal to user pattern, then I break. Otherwise, I should increment my score, but I don't. I go back up to the input statement. And I'm going to input another A, and I go to this. Now, I'm not, I'm not incrementing a score at all. Score, if I look at it, I can look at it in the debugger, it's zero. I can mouse over it here, it's zero. I can mouse over it here, it's zero. This is a logic error because it is in the wrong scope. There's nothing syntactically wrong with this program. I don't get any, any exceptions. I don't get any little wiggles. But it's not working. And it's not working because of scope. So what I have to do is I have to understand, and what I have to do is I have to move it. Okay, I want this to happen when this, when this is false. So I could put an else there, or I could just move it back. Yeah. Put it back. So this is now inside the um, local scope of the while loop. So let's see what happens when I debug it now. Um, I'm going to put in A. I'm going to put in A. And now I get here, and A is, in fact, equal to A. So this is going to evaluate to false. I step over and now I get to increment my score because the patterns do match. So I'm going to wait for this. I'm going to say A. Again, the patterns match, so I get to increase my score. And then I'm going to say B or G or whatever. The patterns don't match, so I break. Now, once I break, once I'm all done with this, I then go and I am in the back into the global scope. So it's the next thing, the next line in the global scope is what's going to happen, and that's going to print the score. Now, I can use user score in the global scope. I can use this variable in the global scope because I defined it in the global scope. If I had done, let's just say US equals 1, if I had done that and decided to use US here, let's see what would happen. Let me just run it. And I'm going to put in A and A. And then I'm going to put in B. And it says user score is 1. Why did it do that? It shouldn't have. Anyway. Oh, maybe it was down here. Yeah. So 
So that didn't illustrate what I wanted it to illustrate. I'm not quite sure why. I'll have to go back. Sorry. Brain shuts down at 10. Um, let's see. Equal Q. It still shouldn't print Q there. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, I haven't done. This should be a syntax error right now. Because of the uppercase, correct? No, because this is it was defined in the wrong scope. Oh yeah, okay. This should be this should be red squiggles, and I don't know why it isn't. Because that should have been defined in the global scope with the outer loop, right? Yes. If if I wanted to be able to use it in the outer scope, it should be defined in the outer scope. So I don't so know why, why why PyCharm is letting this run. So if it was correct, you would need us would need to be all the way back with the initial while statement, right? That's right. Us would need to be out here. Okay. We have to find the while statement. Okay. And then it should be fine. But I put it inside. And it wasn't. So I will have to go find that out and answer that question. I put it here, and it should have not allowed me to do this. And there's no other us defined. So I'll change this back. That was my fancy dancy. Um, and I think sometimes I get, because I'm a very... Uh, not linear person, but I, I like seeing things like in order. Yeah. So I, I think sometimes like, you know, like you just did with like how you can, you know, have print statements in certain places and then like you can define variables. Like it's, it's not always like in order, even yeah. though like it's kind of inside. I think that's throwing me off sometimes too. Okay. Um, so is this helpful? Yes, it is. That was definitely helpful. Good. Do you want to go over anything else? Um, I don't know. I think I think while loops are just gonna have to make sense in my head. Like I I get them, but then like once it comes to like solving a problem, it's it kind of gets a little fuzzy. But I'll just have to get there. My suggestion is you give yourself the opportunity to play with them. Right. As these problems get longer, it's harder and harder for um, it gets harder and harder to be to to solve them as, as the first two weeks. Right. And what I might recommend a student is baby steps. Don't solve the whole problem at first. In fact, you might even, not even want to write it in Zybooks first. Right. You might want to start by writing it in PyCharm. Right. And so what I suggest is if you have a problem like this that's longer, write it in PyCharm and start with just the outer loop, probably a for loop, mm -hmm. and one if statement. Okay? Because you've got global scope is while, the if is inside, the local scope is a while, and then the set has got to be inside the local scope of this if statement. Right. And that's all you write in PyCharm. And, and I guess my suggestion is make this a for loop so you don't have to worry about anything infinite. And mm -hmm. then test it. So if I is there first, what you want to do is you wanna, your input should be like three I's. Right. And if they all get changed to exclamation points, you know the I's work. And if they don't all get changed to exclamation points, then you've got to figure out what that is. But it's a much shorter thing to figure out than if you've written all this code. So and kind of, like, I think they LS, refer to it as like incremental. Yeah, it's incremental. It's baby steps. That's what I call it is baby steps. Right. So you just do it as incremental as possible, and it will save you time. I think most people think that I'm crazy. If most students think that I'm crazy. Most people who develop, unless they are, you know, unless they've got a real computer for a brain, um, do it this way. Most of the people I work with do it this way. 
So okay. that's what you do. You want to take it in small increments. You want to use the tools available, which is PyCharm, because you can't do this in Zybooks. Zybooks will just give you a bunch of errors. Right. But you can do it in PyCharm. And then you're the one who's doing the input to test. And just type things and test it. And if it comes out fine for that particular character, then you've got that one down. And then you move to the next one. And then you move to the next one. And you do that until you've got all the characters. And then at the end, you do whatever the else needs to happen. And then you go and you go back out to the global scope. Right. So that is my suggestion. Yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. Thank you. I don't solve complex problems by writing complex code. Right. I solve complex problems by writing little bits of code at a time and testing it. Makes sense. Thanks so much. No problem. Does anybody have any other questions? going once. Zach, I see you joined a bit late. We're about to end, but I will have this up uh, on my YouTube channel, hopefully tomorrow. Um, if not, the worst will be Saturday, but I'm really hoping I'll be able to do it tomorrow. So I'm going to say have a good night to everybody. And um, if you're in my class, please feel free to contact me. I'm going to stop the recording.